Hey everyone, thanks for tuning in. It really helps me out if you like, comment, subscribe, and if you would consider purchasing from one of my sponsors in the description. Thanks a bunch. Today's episode is brought to you by Pet Assistance First Aid Kits. If you're like me, you love your pet. You take them with you if you can, certainly care for them a ton at home. But just remember that no matter where you are, you are your pet's first responder. Like it or not, you are your pet's first line of care and perhaps only line of care. They depend on you to make sure that they stay happy and healthy. And the people at Pet Assistance have made sure to create a product that will help you do just that. With the help of veterinarians, the Pet Assistance First Aid Kit is a 60 plus piece first aid kit that comes in this handy carrying case. It's a soft carrying case that is meant to be as light as possible. The entire thing fits easily in your car or in any kind of suitcase you're going to use during your travels. The kit contains many bandages and wraps of all sizes for your pet, and it also contains things such as cleaning solution, Q-tips, combs, lancets, and a dog whistle. Here's a list of all the things included with the kit, and hopefully you will find it useful as I have. Remember, pet assistance for the first line of defense for your pet. Okay, this isn't actually meant to be a review. I'll do a review of these when I get my blue goose done here, but that doesn't mean that this model isn't without some drama. So please be sure to stay tuned till the end. So if you're thinking about buying one of these, um, I don't know. I may have some things that make you reconsider. So hang on, we'll get there, I promise. Hey everybody, I'm here today to discuss the Baltimore and Ohio Cincinnatian and specifically I am going to talk about the differences between the models that I have which include this new interesting Train World exclusive Broadway limited edition of the Cincinnatian and the others I have uh, mainly by key models and I've got a Royal Blue which I'll be comparing this to. I was thinking maybe people would be interested to see what the differences are between a brass model made of the Cincinnatian and also the Royal Blue and this fantasy scheme that was made by Broadway Limited specifically for Train World. Now, I have no idea what Train World was thinking of this when, you know, when they said, yeah, let's take a look at that and let's create a Cincinnatian. And maybe somebody there is a big Baltimore and Ohio fan and they decided that they wanted a Cincinnati, and I really have no idea, but I decided to go with it because I thought it might be very interesting to have what is bound to be, I don't know if it's gonna be a collector's piece, but it's certainly a piece that I can run. Here it is, and I am not gonna go through a full review of this. I will do a full review with the Blue Goose, which I'll have up in a few days. I just wanna discuss this Cincinnati thing and compare it to the other models that I have. So let's go ahead and do that. Now, I stumbled onto collecting Baltimore and Ohio somewhat by accident. I actually got a pair of Bud Diesel rail cars pretty cheap, and I decided that I liked everything about their scheme. All right, well, here is my actual Cincinnatian, and the uh, one thing it didn't come with was the original box. But as you can see, the tender is the darker color, so it does come from the second run. And it's really nice. It's very nice looking, right? Nice brass details. No doubt about that. Always been very happy with this, but it's still packed up. I haven't run it. Didn't put DCC. And there is the thing itself. Very nice. Um, you know, I always debated over which one of these I liked better, the Cincinnatian or the Royal Blue. And what I finally decided is I kind of like the Royal Blue just a little bit better, but it's also a little more unique in its styling, but that's okay. I love them both, and it would be like choosing between my first and second born, which of course, I guess most parents actually do in their heads somewhere, even though they won't admit it, right? So here it is, very, very nice model, no doubt about it. Okay, speaking of the Royal Blue, I've got one of those too, actually. Let's go ahead and pop this open, take a look at it. There we go, and if you notice, it is a slightly different shade of blue and the styling is certainly different. It has a much more bullet-like nose, which I always thought was 
pretty unique. I guess there probably are a couple of steam locomotives with this bullet-esque nose. But here you can see them together. They are definitely different. They are definitely not the same steam locomotive, at least externally. And let's take a gander at the um, two tenders here real quick. Let me get this one out of here and I'll put them together. Again, very different styling, right? Um, very, very different. Uh, this one's more minimal, I suppose. Let me grab the other one here, here we go. All right, definitely not as angular in the paint job. Um, so they had different ideas. They're from a different era, different number of axles, that sort of thing. So in a second, I will put these down and we'll compare them um, side by side more holistically, so. All right, here's the passenger consist that is going to run behind my Cincinnatian. And certainly for now, it'll be the Broadway Limited Cincinnatian. So let's take this all apart. And oh, there are the cool names. And um, we'll, let's see, we'll actually put up here which ones go with which. Here's a nice diagram showing you where they should be on the cars. And here are the names of the cars, um, uh, each of the consists according to Wikipedia. All right, let's dig in a little bit farther, and you will notice that I actually have the first run set of coaches. Here are the neat little coupling pins that connect these. They're not run through KDs because this is a dedicated train set. So let's take a look at this here. And once again, you'll notice the lighter shade. So it's a first run and uh, there's the articulated diaphragms. These are gonna be very nice running together. And to be honest, I'm not particularly worried about whether I have the first or second run of these. I pick these up relatively inexpensively, so that helps too. And I don't believe they were ever run. So that was another thing that I liked about them. So yep, they're not quite the correct color. And we'll see in a moment how they match up with um, the actual engine from both uh, the second run that I have and from Broadway Limited. But I don't think it's gonna look particularly bad, especially when they're running at speed. So I'm just not worried about that. Let me just speed this up for you a little bit um, so that you can see all of these and then we'll get to the observation car and I'll show that one off at normal speed again. Okay, here's the observation car. It's pretty nice. If you notice, there are no interior details on any of these, but I don't think that'll be too difficult for me to come up with. I think I'll have to just mess around with the 3D printer a little bit and rearrange some stuff, do some measurements of the windows. It won't be prototypical, but I won't be very worried about that. I'll just be worried about having interiors. So they are pretty nice. Um, yeah, I guess if I maybe would have known about the whole color difference, I would have waited till I would have found the later run, but frankly, I don't think it's going to change my enjoyment at all. All right, let's go ahead and compare the color here, and you can see that yeah, they're, they're definitely not right. They're definitely off somewhat. Um, so I, I just don't know, um, you know, what the B&O community, I'm not like a diehard B&O guy, I said I sort of picked these up by accident in some way and started collecting them. But I think at speed, it's actually gonna look pretty good behind this locomotive. All right, if you look, these are certainly closer together. Let's start comparing them. Here we go. Um, as you can see, there are already just a bunch of differences. Um, they are both streamlined true and they both have somewhat that rounded um, nose. But other than that, they're very different, right? The lengths are clearly different, and it looks like the Blue Goose is ever so slightly wider too, right? So, and if you look, the top details are definitely different and they're not in the same place. Let's take a look at the front. The Blue Goose uh, nose is much, right, it's much uh, more protruding and um, it doesn't have that gentle slope like the actual BNO does. If you remember from the last view, the actual BNO had exposed cylinders while the one here is uh, somewhat shrouded. It's under a shroud. Also, you can more clearly see the difference in, you know, the sloping of the very fronts of them where basically the blue goose has that two step. It has more of, I guess, a traditional pusher in front and then it comes up flat, whereas BNO has more of a skirt that comes down fully angled. 
That of course changes the way that the handrails are bent. So um, yeah, the, the ones from the BNO have that nice angle to them and the ones from the Blue Goose do not. And of course the way they bring air to vent into the smoke stack region is much different, right? You can see that in both of these photos. Some of the other differences, right, are the number boards are in a way different place because of the, the way that these things are laid out. Um, there's the exposed whistle on the Blue Goose, which doesn't exist on the actual BNO Cincinnatian. And if we directly compare the fronts, you'll see how the paint scheme is just way different. They had to change um, the Blue Gooses to kind of accommodate its geometry, where I think it flows much more nicely with the original Cincinnatian. The running gear is obviously different, and uh, the actual BNO Cincinnatian has, you know, the inner hubs are painted, but the metal is exposed on the actual wheel itself, whereas uh, everything looks more single colored on the Blue Goose derivative. Right in here, we can see that they had to drastically change the way the tail ends of these things look in order to accommodate the shape of the Blue Goose. If you look at the actual Cincinnatian, Everything is sloped. Uh, if you look at the window on the front of the cab section there, it's sloped and all the paint matches up with it, where it just doesn't on the Blue Goose. It's, it looks, I don't know, they maybe should have squared it off and you don't even get that bottommost stripe out of it. Coming around to the back right, you can see that the actual Cincinnati has kind of a hump and then it goes into the circular section, which the Blue Goose does too, but that top flat area is much more pronounced it's much taller and uh, yeah just just the entire cab area is just completely different back here obviously the tenders are just of a completely different ilk if you can look um, the blue goose derivative on the bottom there um, this looks like an oil tender right and the Cincinnatians is um, a coal tender right the trucks are completely different they're both three axles but they're just completely different. And the actual Cincinnatian is much more squared off. You can see it from top here, just a much different idea overall. Here's an area of complete difference too. You can see the, um, the original tender has a shroud placed over it in the actual Cincinnatian on the right. And it's just a purpose built um, tender for the Blue Goose derivative. So very, very different. It's very interesting to see how these things are considered and thought up when they do a fantasy type scheme. Okay, here's the comparison to the Royal Blue. And they look more similar in color. I think the Royal Blue used BNO Royal Blue, whereas the Cincinnatian used Regal Blue. So they should be different, but these certainly look closer than the Royal Blue to the key Cincinnatian that I have. Obviously, the bullet nose and the sloping is far more pronounced on the Royal Blue when compared to the Blue Goose version. I really love that curvy bullet shape. Looks really nice. Uh, although, you know, the cylinders are covered in both, and so some way they're a little more common. And if you look, strangely, the tops of the cab regions are a little bit more similar. But the Royal Blue, just like the real Cincinnatian, I think has the very nice slope in front of the cab. I really like that. I think it's a very nice touch. And it also has the drivers that are two-tone. Well, I got a couple of the consists to this tender, but what's weird is the, the uh, coupler was actually sheared off on my tender. And yeah, I guess it really didn't matter because the coupler pin system thing from the cars fit on this just fine. Speaking of the cars, uh, strange as I, these weren't used, these are brand new and two of the trucks on two different cars were actually flipped around and the only way to flip them around is you actually have to kind of partially disassemble them. So Japanese build quality was a bit odd here. I had to do a little bit of work, but at least I know nobody ran these because these just simply won't run well with these things flipped the wrong way. Okay, well, that's about it, right? Well, not quite right. There's a problem. So you can decide whether you like the way this thing looks or not and whether it looks close enough to the Cincinnati in for you. I still think they probably should have adjusted some of these stripes to match the actual lines on the train. But my problem runs a little bit deeper here. Now, I actually don't have my Blue Goose yet, so I'm gonna have to wait to see if the Blue Goose has this same problem, but we do have a problem. 
Uh, man, I'll show it to you here in a second, and it's a pretty obnoxious one. But at least for right now, you can see this thing pull out, and it looks pretty neat. <laughs> Okay, yay, it looks nice, but uh, I want you to take a look at this next clip as it comes around the corner and down the straight, and maybe you can spot the problem. Did you see it? The light flickering, and you didn't see it pausing, but I'll show it to you a little bit more clearly. Basically, whenever you lose power and it switches to the capacitor, the capacitor only keeps the motor and the sound running. It dumps the light and the smoke, and let's watch it come around again. Yes, there's the flicker, and it's gonna happen a few times, and the whole thing actually slows down. And you know, I don't have the greatest track, that's for sure, but this thing should be long enough to where at least it has some wheels picking up power all the time. Throughout both the engine and the tender together, something should be grabbing power. Now, I've seen bad pickups on their Pacifics. In fact, one was so bad that I think the George Washington, I had to return it as a defective. And I'm going to have to do something with this too. I can't believe this is still happening. In fact, a big part of the reason why they went to Paragon 4 is because those Pacifics were having pickup problems and they were never able to resolve them. Well, we've got the same issue here. In fact, sometimes this pickup issue is so bad it actually shorts out my controller and I have to reset it. And after a while, this keeps happening, the light just turns off and the smoke often turns off and you have to dump the entire track and wait about 10 seconds and turn it back on just to reset all the functions. So let's look at this a little bit more closely. I'm not sure, shouldn't that light on the back of the cab be red? I'm not sure about that, so I guess it could be, but you saw it flicker, it is having a lot of problems. Let's go ahead and follow it around the track and watch for that flicker. Okay, so there you have it, another lemony infusion from Broadway Limited. Okay, let's see it uh, running around the track without pulling a consist. Maybe the consist is the problem. Let's pull that off and see if it makes a difference. And here's a spoiler alert, it doesn't make a difference. Yes, the train goes around better because it's not pulling all that weight, but it's still having problems with the track. These videos are interesting because I can tell that they rile the fanboys up. I've never had any problems with BLI, if, if you, yeah. I can always tell because of the number of dislikes I get, which you can't see, but I can, and it's like the more critical I am of BLI, the more dislikes I get. Sorry, but th this one has problems too, um, and I'm going to have to send it back. I don't know if Train World will just simply take it back and give me a replacement, or if I'm gonna have to do a warranty claim on this, but. We'll see how this goes. And for all of you who are saying, ah, your track just sucks, eh, you're right, my track does kind of suck, but it doesn't cause these kinds of problems with any other locomotive I have. 
And in fact, let's take a look at two other Broadway Limiteds. They're about the same size running and see what they get. I'm gonna have to film both of these from the front because they don't have rear lights, but we will start with my Broadway Limited Brass Hybrid uh, Chesapeake and Ohio J1. And I have to apologize in advance. It's much harder to go backwards with the camera than it is forward, but. So it's gonna be a little bit herky-jerky once in a while, but again, look for the light. See if it flickers on and off, and that'll tell you how it's handling my track. All right, this one's pulling a load as well, so you'd actually see some visible slowdown if it was having some problems, and it doesn't, it runs through just fine. Let's go ahead and take a look at my Dreyfus Hudson here, and we'll see if it has any problems. Okay, hope it's no surprise here, but there are no problems with the Dreyfus Hudson either. It rolls through just fine. Problems are limited to the Blue Goose Cincinnatian, and I, yeah, there's nothing I can do about it. I'm certainly not gonna jerk around with the contacts. You can see it slow down there. It's, uh great. Okay, we'll see how the Blue Goose itself does, but this one is definitely not in good shape. So. There you have it. If you were wondering, at least I, this worked enough and <laughs> syntact enough to show you what this looks like in comparison to probably a more accurate model of the actual Cincinnati. And you can decide whether this will work for you or not. It's a good looking locomotive, I think. I just don't know if the lines quite work. It's sort of like when you take a coupe and you try to convert it to a roadster or a convertible, the lines just don't quite work. That's kind of what's happening here, in my opinion. Doesn't mean I don't like it. I'd like it a lot more if it actually worked properly, but I'll have to update everyone on this new saga. Hey, at least the smoke unit's still working right, so there's not a 100% collapse in this thing. So, uh, there. Anyhow, I appreciate you tuning in and watching. I hope this helped you somehow. Please leave a comment if you like it. Uh, please do. If you're a fanboy, you just can't stand the CBLI stumble. I'm sorry about that. I can only report what I see and hear and what happens, and that's what I'm doing here. So, love to know your thoughts on this, as I've said before, and uh, I really appreciate it that you're here watching this. So, thanks a bunch. Take care. I will talk to you later. Happy model rear running. See you next time. Bye for now.